Welcome to Yorkshire in England for today's EMBN show, where we're joined by a very special guest. Yorkshireman. Sheffield, England, one of the finest places on earth to ride a mountain bike and also some great social city life on your doorstep. Today we are joined by none other than Steve Peat, the former world champion, world cup champion, syndicate, uh, how can we describe the syndicate role, head, Steve? Head coach. Syndicate head coach and uh, owner of Peaty's Products. Uh, Steve, did I get that wrong there? I said that we've got a great social scene on your doorstep and then there's a riding scene. Should it be the other way around? You've got the we've social got the scene. riding and then the city is just an afterthought. Yeah, but, but what a place, right? You've got the Peak District. I mean, you've got... Yeah, Sheffield's always been known for having a lot of green space around it. And obviously in that green space, there's loads of mountain biking. Um, there's good clubs and ride Sheffield and everything that make trails and work with the council and use woodland and make trails for all the mountain bikes around but you're really close to the city centre. Yeah so uh, we've been out riding with Steve uh, the last few days on uh, on the Steel City track uh, I mean what fantastic facility to have on on your doorstep Sheffield folk. Uh, Steve we want to talk about the year ahead now obviously the World Cup starts off in June we've got six months between now and then we yep. know that you are a fan of riding your Santa Cruz Heckler and your Bullet. What are your aims? Have you got any e-bike aims for the, for the first six months of the year? Uh, I actually don't really have any e-bike aims, um, apart from get out on them and enjoy them more. Yeah. Um, I, use, I use it as a tool for work at World Cups. So for the last couple of years, I've had my bullet there. I've been flying up and down the hill, looking at lines for the riders, um, whipping about if I if need to do something. So it's been a really good tool for me at work. But um, aims for the year is just to be out having fun. And I guess, yeah, I guess, like we said, you know, with the peaks on your doorstep. So is there any, do you, when you go riding your e-bike, is there a certain type of ride you like to go on or...? Uh, I generally ride my e-bike mostly from home, so... Lucky you. Into, into Warncliffe Woods, which is yeah. on my doorstep. And in Warncliffe, there's a lot of short, steep downhills. And they're fun to get back to the top quick and do another downhill run. So it's, for me, it's kind of a perfect wood for an e-bike. So you like, to, you like, it's important for you to keep your hand in on... Uh, on riding downhill then you don't seem to have lost any speed <laughs> i'd probably differ with you there i beg, <laughs> beg to differ a little bit i i rode my downhill bike the other day at, uh, at revs bike park yeah and i didn't feel that fast on it i got better by the afternoon but i've not rode it since maybe early october yeah um out of the u.s open and so <laughs> yeah i, I I can still ride a bike quite fast. <laughs> I just get a bit tired on a downhill track. It's, fu it's funny, because, it? like, you know, we were with Josh Bryceland, you know, former teammate from, crikey, what was it, 2014? 2016, he retired, didn't he? But we were riding with Josh, and I said, Josh, you know, you're not hanging about yet. And he goes, oh, yeah, maybe. I guess it's, I guess from the outside, it's a different perspective, because you deal with, like, tenths and seconds, don't you? Which yeah. takes a lot to get that little bit of time, doesn't it? You've got to be constantly doing it to yeah. be on your game, like knocking those tents off, basically. Um, you've got to be 100% committed if you're racing downhill. But from the likes of me and Josh, we can jump on a bike and go fast in 20 second burst, 30 second burst. But putting a whole run together, definitely you need to be on your bike a lot more and, and training up to be that speed. Yeah. Do you, do you get, you know, when you go out on your e bike, I'm guessing because you love motorcycle trials as well. It, does that you're into that type of riding? You're the technical element of, of riding an e-bike. Yeah, on uh, on my e-bike, I just love that you can do like do a little technical bit, a little climb or something, whip down a trail and get back to the top quite quick. And then the climb could be a little bit tech, so it's actually fun to climb and get grip and make the bike work mm -hmm. going uphill. But you also get to the top of the hill a little bit quicker, so you get to do more of the down too. Yeah. Um, I know that you know many people 
and not into e-bike racing. But at the same time, it does offer the opportunity to go and ride in some fantastic places with the EWS series. Have you, have you considered doing that at all? I have thought about doing a EWS e-bike race. Um, but for me, the racing element, after talking to a lot of people that raced at Inalethan last year. Yeah, tough event, right? It was tough, yeah. <laughs> and like, you've got, I talked to Pagey, talked to um, Jared Warner. Graves, talked yeah. to Rob Warner, yeah. and they all weren't that into it. Right. And it doesn't, it doesn't really appeal to me that good, like racing it but I would love to maybe do the series and visit all the nice places and ride my bike in some cool places. <laughs> well, I guess there's always the, the EWS 100, which you haven't got to meet those, those checkpoints on time. So there's less, less pressure with that. Yeah. Um, any riding mates in, Spe in Sheffield on riding e-bikes? What's, what's is there is like an e-bike scene in, in Warncliffe and, and Steel City? Yeah, definitely. We've got a little group that, although we slacked off a little bit lately, we were, we were out every Tuesday night. Um, Right, meeting meeting in the car park at the top of the wood and, and going for a nice ride and then calling for a couple of Guinnesses after. it was. It, we had a good crew going for a little bit. Yeah. They like to call themselves the 100 to 1 crew. Okay, right. Now, uh, talking about lube, we uh, have the great pleasure of having uh, Petey's Lubus on the channel this year. Oh, crikey, sorry, I got the wrong one then. Uh, Petey's <laughs> Lubus on the channel this year. So uh, check out the videos, not just on EMBN, it'll be on GMBN and GMBN Tech with Doddy as well. Now, a uh, quick bit of news uh, before we dive into where in the world and what you guys have been up to. Uh, Steve, I see that Brandon Seminuk, the winner of Rampage many times, has come up with a new Etnies flat shoe, a vegan shoe. A vegan now, shoe? Now, my question to you is not whether you ride vegan shoes or not. What non makes a vegan shoe? I don't know, you're just making it complicated now. I was going to ask you. <laughs> I was just going to ask you is, when you ride your e-mountain bike, do you ride flats or do you ride clips? Uh, on my e-mountain bike, I ride flats. All right. Yeah. And the reason for that? I run Bergtech flats and I just like, I like the freedom I've got on it. With it being a heavier bike, I feel a little bit more planted. I can run the suspension a little bit softer and my feet stick to the pedals a little bit better. There you go, folks. Uh, let's know, do you ride flats or clips? There's, I mean, fantastic insight there into the man who has won 17 World Cup downhill. All clipped in. All, are they really all clipped in? Yeah. Did you ever, did you ever think about riding flats? <clears throat> I did, I tried to run flats a couple of times. I, the one that I remember was Leger when it absolutely chucked it down. Oh, I wonder who she that was. <laughs> <laughs> the track was so wet, it had big ruts everywhere. Oh, 99, wasn't it? On... Could have been 99, <laughs> yeah. Cedric crashed last corner. Yeah, yeah. But in practice, I put flats on because the ruts were so deep, I thought, oh, I can just attack more on flats. It doesn't matter if my feet come off. Mm -hmm. And I ended up riding over my head, basically. Because I had flats on, the confidence... Well, literally over your head. <laughs> a couple of times. <laughs> But the confidence level lifted because I was like, oh, I've got flats on, I can take my foot off whenever I want. And I started hitting ruts too hard, yeah. taking my foot off, dragging pedals. And for race run, I went back to clipped in and I felt like I was way more efficient and I could stay on. And, and I didn't try and attack the corners too much because I was clipped in knowing that I couldn't lose a foot, but it made me ride smoother and more efficient. I didn't think I'd ever think, hear you say that. You didn't attack the corners as much. Did yeah. you just say that? I did, because when I was on flats, I had too much confidence. <laughs> I had to rein it back a little bit. But surely it's good to be able to run both, right, at the end of the day. It That's... is. And like these days, if I'm going to race, even if I'm going to race on an e-bike, I would clip back in again, because once you start pushing that race speed, your feet start lifting over jumps, or um, I'm not as efficient. So yeah, if I'm racing, I'd be clipping back in. Do you know what? I'm glad we brought up the subject of vegan shoes, the new Etnies vegan shoes from Brand Standard, because we actually didn't talk about them at all. But I thought, I think what we talked about was very interesting. <laughs> Folks, let us know your thoughts. <laughs> Some interesting feedback from you guys over the Christmas and New Year period. Um, kicking things off is the video we did, or Chris did, on should you service your e-mountain bike motor. Now, um, David Pittman suggests that yes, it's impressive, but 
Are we really supposed to expect to get 20,000 kilometers out of a mid-drive motor on an EMTB without any kind of service? Uh, Steve, uh, a Shimano EP8 8000 motor is guaranteed for 20,000 K. Yep. I mean, the parts are gonna wear up before the bike, right? On the motor. I would say so, yeah. <laughs> There's not many people that do 20,000 K. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, your body's going to be worn out after that, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to do it in a week. Uh, <laughs> next up, how much travel uh, would you need on an e-mounted bike? This is where me and uh, Nick talked about. Um, you know, 120, 100, 150, 160. Uh, so Grillito says suggests that 150, 150 is the sweet spot for e-mountain bikes. Thoughts on that? Um. I think travel depends on the kind of terrain you're riding in. Here, here in Sheffield, I've got good hills, I've got good trails that require a little more suspension. So the bullet for me is a good mix. Whereas if I was going, if I lived down south, it was a little bit flatter riding uh, Surrey Hills all the time. I'd just go for a, a full rigid. <laughs> but, well, okay, it's an inter interesting topic, folks. Uh, please do get involved in uh, more uh, debate about how much travel you should have on an e-mounted bike. And then finally, we've got some comments on the video, can you get fit on an e-mounted bike, where we were joined by Alan Millway, who actually works with Greg Menard, doesn't he? On the, on the syndicate team. He does, yep. he does. Um, For his strength. To, 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 if you're doing 20,000K on, on an e-bike, well, you're gonna get fit. You are gonna get fit. Fitter than you were. 100%, <laughs> yeah. especially if you're doing, if you do 2,000K, it depends how much of that 2,000K is downhill. Yeah, I mean, that's, it around that's a, a lot. Bit. That's a lot of downhill. You know, if you're riding yeah. on the flat, it might be different. But the, on the business of keeping fit, uh, Mickey B says, "Let's have more of this type of content, please." Yes, we'd love to. And then finally, uh, actually, there's one more. Paul Hamilton says, "Ah, but losing weight will make you slower downhill." Paula, interesting. Paula, what a belter and a very appropriate losing weight on your body. You're not going to lose that much weight to affect you going downhill, but you've got a heavy e-bike too, so that's gonna compensate for the weight loss. Is there, do you think there's an optimum weight for a World Cup downhill racer? I don't think there's an optimum weight. I think every person is a little bit different. We've got a variety of riders on the syndicate. And yeah, we've got true. Two, two little guys, yeah. Jackson and Laurie, yeah. are really small and light. Um, they ride smaller bikes, they ride mixed wheel. Greg is taller. Probably 85 kilos, 85, 90 kilos, Greg? Yeah, 85-ish, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe a little bit less. Six um, foot, six foot four? Race. No, he's probably six, two, six, okay, three, right, I think. Yeah. Um, but he likes a 29-inch bike. It suits his style of riding a little bit more. Yeah. He, he prefers that. So yeah, horses for courses horses for me, for that one. Yeah. Uh, um, and finally is PMJ says, it's not working for you, Steve, is it? That's for me, not you. Losing weight on a man bike. Getting fit. Yeah, we will leave that one. Folks, let's, let's... Why does he say that? I don't know. Let's leave it, Chewy. Let's move on. Let's just move on. No, I don't really Folk... want to know this. <laughs> Folks. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, thanks so much for your comments. Uh, keep coming. Uh, and looking forward to tackling more of them next week. Okay, folks, uh, it's now time to take a look where you've been riding over the holiday period. And uh, Steve, I know we rode some amazing trails uh, up on the hills above your house today, but it did get a bit cold, didn't it? So it got cold by the afternoon, yeah. It yep. did. So I'm going to kick things off on Where in the World this week with uh, Jackie, who is down in Cape Town on uh, KTM Machina, and then take things across uh, to uh, Cape Lookout coast in on the, Oregon. On the beach. On the beach. And Oregon. Was was your first World Cup win in Oregon or Washington State? Washington, yes. Yeah, Snoqualmie Pass. Washington State. Uh, next up, we've got Ray and his Trek Fuel EX in Apache Junction, Arizona. Looks a bit desert, doesn't it? John Wayne will be riding past there. I would, yeah. That looks like proper uh, tequila country there. And... Uh, then we have a lovely bit of trail in Silver City MTB. Where is that? I don't know where. Where's Silver, where's Silver City? Silver City. Oh, Silver ah, City. Uh, and then Andy is in Trinidad, Colorado on his Rossignol Mandate Shift. That looks nice. Now, too. next up, Steve, is a great little video um, 
which has been sent in from a place which I think you're f- familiar with, Santa Monica. Mm. It looks like I never, I never thought that Santa Monica would be a great place to write, write an e-mountain bike. But these well, guys, and, uh, why would I be familiar with it? Well, didn't you spend you spent a lot of time there back in the nineties? <laughs> Not Santa Monica, but uh, well, hold, hold, hold on, you spent a lot of time in, in Huntington Beach, right? Huntington Beach. Yeah. I guess it's, yeah. I guess one's south, one's north, but yeah, it's a little bit further north, isn't it, Santa Monica? Why wouldn't you be in Santa Monica? I wish I'd have spent more time there, but uh, especially looking at those trails. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, Steve, I wouldn't mind uh, another bit of sunshine this time of year. Yeah, it sure. got cold today while we were riding, so a bit of sunshine would be nice. So you do, I mean, so you did you did the you did the old Huntington Beach thing for many years, didn't you? In the winter, <coughs> quite a few years. Yeah, when I rode for GT, first one out there, ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, this might bring back some memories. The next shot is actually from John, uh, who's in Valencia. Valencia. Few Not far hours, away. A few hours north. Not far, though, Valen- right? Valencia is near Magic Mountain, the I mean, theme park. I mean, that looks like a fantastic part of the world, doesn't it? It does, that's lovely. Uh, and then to close this week's Where in the World, we have got uh, UC who's out in Finland. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to give the pronunciation a go. La Lapinirananta. No, Lapinenranta. Lapinenranta. Do you like the snow? I wouldn't say I'd choose to go out riding my bike in the snow unless it was a little bit like crisp on top, mm. a little bit frozen. Yeah. Um, There's a difference in there. There's a big difference. If you're in, where is he, Lapland? Finland. Finland. Yeah. If you're in Finland and it's going to be snow all winter, put some bigger tyres on, lower yeah. them pressures if you're on tubeless. And, tubeless, uh, of course. Get riding. Now, folks, uh, if you've not already ridden tubeless, uh, I suggest it's time to begin thinking about tubeless because we've got a few tubeless videos coming up on the channel and I've been given an insight into how it can actually allow you to run lower pressures and uh, tackle those climbs which you might not have done before in places like you guys have shown us here on Where in the World. Uh, Steve, this is the part of the show uh, mm-hmm. where we look at some of the viewers' bikes they've sent in. Um, I guess the idea is, is, is the bike nice? Is it super nice? Now, Martin Ashton. Mm-hmm. Martin Ashton is very finickety about this. He doesn't like people or dogs in the shot. He doesn't like multiple bikes in the shot. He just wants to see a bike. He just wants to see a bike. And, and it's... Uh, let's just dive straight in. Now, this first one is actually a transition repeater of Don's, who is... That must be Don. There's a person in the shot. Yeah, that Martin is Don. Won. You see, I like to have a person in the shot, and I think the, the transition repeater is a lo- really nice looking bike. Mm. Nice or super nice? Don's happy with it. Don's happy. Is, yeah. Does that mean this is super nice? Uh, it looks nice. It's green. It's camo. He's not saying super nice, is he? He might lose it in the woods. Okay, he might. Have. Well, uh, Don, it's a, it's a nice from Steve Pete. Uh, moving on is a Hunt High Bike All Mountain in Coy de Brennan. Coy de Brennan. What kind of accent is that exactly? What kind of accent was that exactly? <laughs> <laughs> Same as yours, a terrible one. <laughs> uh, I think this. I think this is a nice shot too. Coy de Brennan. When did we have Coy de Brennan last? What a great place. Uh, when was I last there? I drove through many times recently. Um, they, they don't want to hear pro- that. They do not want probably, to hear that. Probably, maybe three or four years ago, stopped off and did a little e-bike uh, loop. Was, yeah. was his name Sean Roberts, David Roberts? Yeah, I went and saw Sean and David. Did you? Uh, called in to see him. Yeah, one oh. time the school, when they were at the schoolhouse. Oh. And, yeah. They do. Yeah. Uh, David Roberts, by the way, is the, the, the man that actually put this all together at It's Carter Brennan, wasn't he? He was, yeah. He built all the trails and put it all together, yeah. Uh, Hunt, it's a nice shot. Uh, moving on, we've got a focus uh, from Tommy uh, in Dolby Forest, North Yorkshire. Uh, I like that shot. Um, I think definitely it's, chose his stick wisely. Chose the stick wisely. I think yeah. it's a nice shot. Uh, next up is uh, now Steve. Where's that? Um, it's in Cotopaxi, which is in Chile. Uh, Sorry, yeah. I've got it wrong. Cot- uh, Cotopaxi's volcano in Ecuador. Ah. I've got the, well. There's there's one for you for you know possibly an adventure. It looks very UK that I think that shot there. What a volcano! Well, just <laughs> just the trees and the grass, the little bit of orange bracken. I think it looks kind of UK style. Do you think? But do you think Sandro? Do you think Sandro's heading for a super nice on that? 
Um, yeah, nice place to ride. It's a nice place. He's not, he's not going, is he? He's not doing it. He's not doing it. Uh, and now Jim. Now Jim's got, uh, this is a Mondraker Chaser. This is in Limburg, Netherlands. Yeah. Come so on. I can see it's the Netherlands. Are those, <laughs> is those Hope Cranks in there? I think they are, aren't they? Um, thoughts? Thoughts? Uh, yeah, quite flat. Quite. Netherlands has not got many hills. <laughs> Could this actually be the first ever bike vault with no super nices in it? Well, I mean, I'm actually waiting for a Santa Cruz to pop up. I guess you are new to that, so this is why deliberately I've not put any in the bike vault this week. I reckon they're all super nice, but <laughs> if there was a Santa Cruz in there, it'd be super, 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 nice. super. Okay, do you know what? We, what if it's something that's super nice, we actually give it a whistle. A whistle. <whistles> so there you go. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Jim, you've got a super nice. I do not know, but. Um, I don't know who's got a super nice yet. Who's <laughs> not Anyway, what we've here got is Peter's Orbea Rise H15 in Slovakia. Uh, I really like the colour on it, but... It looks not, cold there, though, it? Looks it? Cold, it looks mm. cold, it looks cold. And then, finally, Damien's Nukeproof Megawatt up in Hamsterley Forest. Danny Hart's Descend that looks like Bike UK. Park. That definitely does look like UK. Uh, I'm loving the green and red on there. Um, but you know what? Why don't, we, why don't we have a mellow start here and not get too excited by the bikes? Or does that mean? They should be... They should be if they, I think we did give one super nice there, but I think uh, uh, Damien's new proof is a nice bike. Thoughts? Love riding at Hamsterley. You do? Yeah, it's good up there. Been it's nice. not bad. Raced there many years. Folks, Danny Hart's Descend Bike Park Hamsley. It's a super nice place to go to. <laughs> Maybe you should have super is. nice trails, Nick. What about that? Actually, Steve, on the subject of super nice, I think uh, the trails we've been riding here in Sheffield, thanks for showing us around. Still sit down, all is I super think nice. It is, it is actually super nice. You know, it's the kind of place you can ride on a hardtail, on a trail bike, on a downhill bike, on an e-bike, mm -hmm. especially on an e-bike, because you can just run those laps, lap, laps, and laps, and uh, have a great time. Uh, was a good time. We Definitely. rode it. We rode it in midwinter. You can still ride it and not get covered in muck. Yeah, it's getting a little bit muddy, but it needs a bit of fixing. Do you know up. what I really like about it and why I give it a super nice? Because it's got no puddles on it. I got a wet back foot today. Oh bless you! A one wet back foot. Yeah, my but right do you know? Do you know what bugs me is trails with puddles in them. I don't go to ride my mountain bike to ride with puddles. No, I agree with you, but it's hard to keep puddles off unless you've got a permanent trail crew. Have you got that in. there? We don't have it there, no, but there's a lot of people riding that could take a little shovel with them and help fix the trails as they go. Folks, get yourselves up to Sheffield to Steel City Track. It's a fantastic place. There's some lovely social life in Sheffield City. Uh, you've got Steve Pete on your doorstep and... Uh, what a place. Steve, thanks so much for showing us around the trails and joining us on today's... No Second problem. EMBN show of the year. And uh, yeah, looking forward to going that way into the Peak District. See you next week. Cheers.